talking about a lot of things today. If you want to audio tape, that's fine. No videotaping allowed, period, under any circumstances. I suggest that you all take notes because the truth is, is that no matter how smart we think we are, and me included, we usually retain only about 10% of anything that we hear. This is going to be intensive. For about six hours, I'm going to bombard you with information. So if you don't take notes, when you leave here, you're going to say, now, what did he say about that? And uh, it, 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 the purpose of this is to leave you with something. I want you to go out of here with a, a good understanding of the information that I'm going to cover. My purpose is not to change your religion. My purpose is not to... Uh, make you believe everything that I say. On the contrary, I'm the only one in the world that will tell you, listen to everyone, read everything, believe absolutely nobody, including me, including your mother, including your pastor, your preacher, your priest, your Uncle Bob, and anybody else that you can think of, unless you can prove it in your own research. And research doesn't mean getting a book off the library shelf and reading it and saying, well, he said it, so it must be true. Because I wrote a book, you see. And I'm telling you, don't believe me, unless in your own research, you can prove what it is that I'm telling you. Because this is the age of deception. And if you don't believe that, you might as well go home right now, because you're in the wrong place. This is the age of deception. And everybody today is living in a fantasy world, and they're promoting agendas that they don't understand, because somebody has told them that it's the right thing to do and they generally believe it. Most people go to the church that they go to simply because their parents did and for no other reason. Most people who are Democrats are Democrats because their parents were. Are they Republicans because their parents were? If you ask them what is a Republican they couldn't tell you in a hundred million years. They don't know. They vote that way because that's comfortable for them because that's what they grew up with. Most of us do what we do because we grew up in it. So there is an awful lot about this environment around you shapes who and what you are. It's the truth. I had a uh, woman at the post office where we lived the other day say, I listen to your radio station every day. It's wonderful. But when Bill's show comes on, I turn it off because I don't want to be brainwashed. What is she admitting to? She's admitting that she's already been brainwashed because she is unwilling to listen to opposing viewpoints. That's the biggest number one sign of brainwashing that there is. It didn't matter that it was my show. It's any show. Any opposing viewpoint. Anything that opposes the status quo, if you won't listen to it, you're already brainwashed. You've closed your mind and you are at the mercy of whatever manipulation they want to throw your way because you've already determined that they're telling you the truth no matter what. You don't investigate. You have accepted blindly. That's the most dangerous thing that can happen to anyone. The moment that you say, this guy right here, I like him. I like what he says. He's right. I'm going to listen to him. And anybody that says anything different to him is wrong. You've just totally destroyed yourself. Because the truth is, he's a human being. I'm a human being. This young lady is a human being. Bill Clinton is a human being. Okay? When you mistake, when you mistake people for righteousness, or when you mistake people for the message, or when you mistake people for government, or when you mistake people for religion, you're making a big mistake. Because people, for the most part, are a big mistake. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to tell you? We are subject to temptations. We are subject to our own carnal desires, lusts, and, and uh, uh, well, I could probably go through a list of about 500 things that can make an average, normal, good, 
thinking, good doing person for most of the time, at some point in their life do something that's absolutely terrible. Most of us are here and not in jail because most of us, when we did whatever it was that was so terrible in our life already, and everybody here without exception has done something like that, we got away with it, didn't we? Okay. The concept that imperfect men can rule imperfect men is absolutely ludicrous. The concept that you can give someone power and they're not going to abuse that power is also ludicrous. It is wrong for us to ever get into that kind of thinking. And the more power you give someone, the more opportunity they have to abuse or misuse that power. And the easier it is to fall into temptation for them. Now, I got to tell most of you right now, I don't like Bill Clinton any more than you do, but it's wrong. It is absolutely wrong of us to judge Bill Clinton. What we can say is we don't want him as president. He shouldn't be running the government, but unless you've walked in his shoes, unless you know what temptations he's fallen prey to, or what people have offered him to be and do what he is and what he does, being imperfect humans ourselves, it's not right to do that. And if you're a Christian, you know, judge not lest ye be judged, right? So it's wrong for us to do that. It's okay to call him a communist because he is. Okay? It's okay to tell the truth. Truth is what I'm all about. And believe me, sometimes I get caught in the deception just like everybody else, but it's not as easy to catch me in the deception as it is to catch most of you. Because I've been caught too many times, and I learn from my mistakes. And I spend 99% of my time searching out the truth where none of you have ever looked. Some of you may have looked in some of the areas and some of the things that I've looked in, but I can guarantee you there's nobody in this room who has looked where I've looked as long as I have looked as diligently as I have done it. Okay? Now, what I'm going to try to do today is sort of give you some of what I've learned. And you can take it for whatever you think it's worth. I hope that you will take it out of here and use it to search for your own truth. Truth is not always cut and dried. It's not always black and white. You can't get into the concept that, hey, this is right and that is wrong and there is no in-between because that's not true. There are all kinds of in-between all the time. And truth is elusive, folks. I have to tell you this. It's elusive at best and it's hard to find. And the moment you think you know it all, you have lost yourself again. It's one of the major things that I've discovered in my life is by the time we reach an age where we understand we need to learn something that we don't really know at all, it's usually in the late 30s or sometime in the 40s. If you've discovered that earlier than that, you are the exception, you are not the norm. Because it isn't it true that during the first years of our life, we're just discovering the world around us. We're subject to the authority of our parents and... Doyle, why don't you go ahead and put it up here, it won't bother me a bit. All right. <clears throat> we're subject to the dictates of our parents, the authority of our parents, our preacher, our minister, um, high school teachers, principals, the community at large, and isn't it true that during those years we're basically trying to serve some sense of discover who we are and what the world is about and not really what the truth is, sort of fit our way into it whether we think we belong or not. And isn't it true that during those years the major preoccupation with most people is to be liked by everybody else? Isn't that what most of us spend most of our time in high school doing? Trying to be liked by everybody else? So that instead of looking for the truth or doing the right thing, we do what we think 
the other children around us would like for us to do so that they will like us. Now it's not bad to admit that because it's a human thing and every person in their younger years goes through that. Then we get into our later teens and our early 20s and, and what is the major preoccupation on everybody's mind? Sex, right? Anybody who says no, I'll call them a liar to their face. It's sex. Whether you'll admit it or not, it's the truth. And because to be involved in that activity or to have someone, whether you're involved in actually having sex or not, but the sexuality of being with someone else, you have to have a job. And you have to have a car. And you have to be able to talk the talk and walk the walk, right? So that takes up our life. And then sometime, usually in the later 20s, some guy sets out to get a girl and she traps him, <laughs> right? So they get married. Some people don't, and that's to their great credit because personally folks after having lived my life and being honest with myself any woman who marries a man before he's the age of 36 is a fool because most men aren't ready for that they're not mature enough and you're just asking for trouble but people have done it and succeeded I don't know how they did it but they did it <laughs> But that's what in, we're all wrapped up in that stuff. And none of it really means anything. Because it's all going to happen to you anyway. If you are just doing the right thing, you're going to attract the right people. And if you're a man, the right woman's going to come along. And if you're a, a woman, the right guy's going to come along. If you're involved in doing right things. But the problem is, we try to make it happen. And that's where we get in trouble. And we ignore all the most important things that we should be involved in in our life that really matter because this these other things are just natural things that are going to happen you can't make somebody like you in high school whatever in the world made us think that that we could make people like us if we just go along and do what we're supposed to do and just be ourselves people are going to like us but we think we have to make it happen or we think if we do this or we do that, Susie's going to like us more and uh, we're going to have the hot date we've always dreamed about. Well, you might, but as soon as Susie finds out that it's all phony, it's all going to fall apart anyway, right? Okay. So by the time we're in our late 30s or sometime in our 40s, it's usually when we begin to discover what's really important in life. Now, if you don't believe that, look around in this room and look at the age of everybody in here. See, if I was lying, this room would be full of 16-year-olds and 20-year-olds and 25-years-olds, but it's not, is it? What's the average age of everybody in here? Late 30s and 40s, right? So I'm telling you the truth, aren't I? By the time we reach that stage, if we make a concerted effort to learn everything that we need to know, and begin to really do the right things, we don't have enough time left. That's why I devote every single moment that I have in my life to this. Because there just isn't enough time. And even if I do the very best job that I can possibly do, I can't complete the task that I need to, to complete before I'm going to pass on into another reality. And so it's so important to me that you get something from me and take it and continue with what I'm doing. The whole nation needs to be doing this. Now I'm going to talk about this country and what it's all about. Some of you are going to disagree with me and during this talk today and tomorrow I'm going to make some of you angry. And I want you to understand this. If what I'm telling you up here is not true, it 
it's not going to bother you. You're a rapist. Did that bother anybody in here? Anybody get bothered by that? No. You know why? Because there's no rapists in here. If I said, you're a rapist, and somebody got up and started yelling at me and ran out the door, you'd know I hit somebody, wouldn't you? Okay. On my radio show, I use the term sheeple a lot. I can always tell when I hit the targets, boy, I get the letters. How dare you call me a sheeple? <laughs> that person wouldn't have wrote that letter if that person wasn't a sheeple. Because they would have known I wasn't talking about them. Right? Only the person that the arrow hits gets angry. So the reason I'm telling you this is if you find what I'm talking about disturbing, I'm hitting you with some truth that is bothering you. That's really bothering you and you need to look at it really closely. Because it wouldn't be bothering you if it wasn't true. If it wasn't pinging on you personally, with something that you know inside of you is not right, it's not going to upset you. And that's the truth. Okay. <clears throat> There are a lot of people who are extremely critical of my radio broadcast because they say I spend too much time on symbology and history and the mystery religions and all of these things that they write me letters and say, it doesn't, I, I don't care about that. It doesn't mean anything. Why don't you get into some nitty gritty? Well, they don't understand that is the nitty gritty. He who does not study and understand history is doomed to repeat it. And the same play has been being performed throughout the history of the world by what we call the builders, the controllers, the puppet masters, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to start right at the beginning and tell you exactly who they are and how to identify them. Okay? Because there really are puppet masters, there really are controllers, there really are builders, but they're not engaged in building buildings, they're engaged in building people. They're building what they call the perfect race. They're perfecting humanity in order to control nature. They're building the utopian world that they perceive that we need. I said, who's we? We who? You didn't ask me about this. You know? And that's the problem with these guys. They have placed themselves in, a, in an elitist attitude to tell the rest of us what we need. And the truth is, we don't need them to do that. Okay? They haven't got the right to do that. They think they do, because they think we're just a bunch of stupid cattle. And I got to tell you, for the most part, most people prove them right all the time. Not intentionally, but because the knowledge, the truth has been withheld from the people. And that's how they manipulate people, is by withholding the truth and controlling them with the lies. Okay? Now... First, I got to start off here. I got to ask you a question. What's the most important thing about this country that you can think of? And I want to see some hands and hear some answers. This is a participation sport when you come in here with me. Okay? Yes, sir. Recognition of God-given rights. Recognition of God-given rights. Okay. Individual liberty. Individual liberty. Freedom. Freedom. No king but King Jesus. Sound money. Sound money. Okay, now I'm going to ask you another question. Which one of those, because somebody already gave the right answer, which one of those do you think is the right answer? Everybody all at once. Freedom. 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 Why? Because none of the rest of them would exist without it. You couldn't have any of the rest of them without the freedom to do it. You give somebody the power, 
to say you can't have one king but King Jesus, and you're not going to have King Jesus, you're not going to have Christianity, you're not going to have a church. In fact, if they catch you saying the word Jesus, they'll all but chop your head off and throw your body to the lions. Isn't that correct? Okay. The greatest thing about this country, whether you agree with me or not, it's the absolute truth. If you take this away from any person or any group of people, you have no country. Freedom. You have no religion. You have no sound money. You don't have any of it. You're subject to the control of the people who have taken your freedom away and who are now subjecting you to their will because that's what lack of freedom is. Being subject. You know what subject means? To someone else's will. Freedom means you're subject to your own will. As long as what? As long as you take responsibility for your actions and you never hurt the person or property of any other human being. Period. If you do, you put yourself at war with someone else. Is that freedom? No. Then you're taking someone else's freedom away. You have become the bad guy when you do that. How many of you have heard of Dave Emery? Talk show host. KGO, San Francisco. Anybody? The other day he called me that famous fascist. Do I sound like a fascist? <laughs> no. But you see, that's part of the manipulation. Because... Pardon? No, he has an agenda, is what he has. <laughs> yeah. He's not really thinking. He's fulfilling an agenda. He has an agenda. He's a socialist. He doesn't want people to listen to me who tell you that freedom is the most important thing in the world because socialism can't have people walking around saying like things like that. Because socialism doesn't give you freedom. They want you to think it does. Aren't they trying to bombard you with the delusion that liberals are for freedom? Liberals are for socialism. Liberals started out being for freedom when there wasn't any. Being for freedom was liberal. Being conservative was for the power of the king. Remember? All of our founding fathers were liberals. Believe it. They were also traitors. So when somebody calls me a, a traitor, because uh, I'm supposedly against the government, it doesn't bother me, I'm in damn good company. But you see, I'm not a traitor. Because what is the government? We are not the government. No, we're not even supposed to be. What is the government? The government is a contract signed by the Founding Fathers, which is called the Constitution for the United States of America. That is the government. That says what the government can do, what the government cannot do. When it can do it, when it cannot do it. Where it can do it, where it cannot do it. Are you parties to that contract? Huh? Nope. No, you're not. How can you be party to a contract you didn't sign? You can't be. So it's a contract entered into between the signatories representing the first 13 colonies in order to establish a union of independent sovereign states for their mutual benefit and protection. Correct? Am I right? Okay. Only those who signed it and those whom they legally and lawfully represented are really bound to it. Is that correct? Yeah. No. <laughs> now, don't get into all this posterity stuff, because posterity is only bound to it if they want to be. How do you get bound to it? You're in a territory which wants to become a state. 
and by vote you agree to become bound to it and are accepted as a state of the union. You understand that? Okay. Why? Because you elected representatives to act in your behalf. Is that correct? Okay. Is that a democracy? No. no. Is this a democratic country? No. no. Was it ever meant to be? No. No. Never. No. Never. So why do we hear all this talk about democracy all the time? It's the agenda to brainwash the American populace into accepting democracy, which is what? The first step into socialism. Why? No, because in our human failings and in our temptations, if it's one man, one vote, the majority is going to vote themselves everything, right? And if you vote yourself everything, what is that? The state owes me a job. We're going to vote that the state has to give us all a job. We're going to vote that the state is responsible for making sure that I have X number of dollars a year, so we're going to vote that there's going to be a minimum income for everybody in the country. That's socialism. Lenin, V.I. Lenin, you all know who he is? The man who founded the Soviet Union? V.I. Lenin said, democracy is indispensable to socialism. You can take a free people, make them into a democracy from whatever they were before, and they will vote themselves into slavery every single time because they are weak. They want the benefits. They want the check from the government. They want the job from the government. They want a car from the government. They want medical care from the government. They want everything from the government. What's the fallacy in that? The government doesn't have anything to give you unless they first take it away from you. Right? Now, for somebody who works and is productive, they don't like that. That's not good, is it? Somebody, however, who is a weak victim, that's great, isn't it? Because they don't have to do anything anymore, do they? They can just sit back and be provided for. Have you noticed all across the country right now, they are creating victim classes of people? Why do you think that is? Because victims need care. Once you create a victim that needs care, you have another vote for socialism, don't you? Most of it is a scam. When I grew up as a boy, I lived all over the world. I remember one period of time when I was in junior high. That's seventh and eighth grade. I lived in Midwest City, which is right outside of Oklahoma City. I went to Midwest City Monroney Junior High School, which had just been built. We were the first students in that school. Nobody locked their doors. I never knew a girl that got pregnant. Never, ever, not once. Never knew anybody who was divorced. Never knew anybody whose home was robbed. I had my bicycle tire cut one time by a kid who didn't like me. <laughs> Big deal. You know, what's that? Three bucks for a new tire. And, of course, I bloodied his nose. <laughs> we both got whipped by our parents. Him for slitting my bicycle tire, me for bloodying his nose. But I didn't care. He didn't care either. We lived in a different world than we live in today. Everybody earned a living. Everybody who wanted to work had a job. I don't care who it was. And the only thing that could hold them back would be the lack of an education, which was available to everybody, except in some extreme rural areas of this country where there really was poverty, lack of education, and inability to get good work because they didn't have that education. Now you see people coming in this country complaining about these things that have no legitimate complaint. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not pinging on immigrants. 
Because if I lived in a place that was so terrible I couldn't support my family or put a roof over my head or even find a toilet to go to the bathroom, I would be coming across this border just as quick as they are. You can't fault them for that. It's illegal. You can fault the government for allowing it to happen because it's illegal, it's unlawful. And they're always talking about we've got to follow the law. Truth is, we only have to follow the law that they think is okay. Why do they want these people coming across our borders? Because these people are helpless. They're without money, they're without a home, they're without a job. What are they? Victims. What do victims bring? Give them the vote and you're going to have socialism. That's why they don't try to stem the flood of immigration. It furthers the agenda of socialism. I feel sorry for those people. They're being used. And their only thought is to find a good place where they can have a good life for themselves and their children. They're being used and abused. And they all become good little Democrats. They all vote socialist. And they all want their handouts from under Uncle Sam. There are some who came into this country many years ago of many different nationalities who have learned the American way. Our good Americans are not immigrants. They are Americans. And they've established and have a sound place in this country. They're part of it. But they're being used. They can't speak the language. Because they can't speak the language, it's hard to find a job. When they find a job, it's not at the pay that they would like to have. So they look to the government to solve their problems. Does everybody understand what I'm telling you? You've often wondered, why is it that they don't do anything about this flood of immigrants coming across the border? And I'm not talking about just Hispanics from Mexico, Central and South America. I'm talking about from all over the world. They come here for a better life, not realizing that in coming here and being manipulated and used as they are, they're going to destroy all of their chances for ever having the American dream. They're going to help bring about socialism, which will put them back into slavery again. And that's got to stop. You have to understand the agenda, you have to understand who's bringing it about and why before you can see the manipulations and how people are being used and manipulated to bring it about. How many of you believe that this is a Christian government? How many of you believe that it was founded as a Christian government? I hate to tell you this, but you're wrong. This country was built by Christians because that's the majority of the people who originally came here. And a lot of the things that they believed in is reflected in our laws and in our traditions and in our government. But the government was never meant to be Christian. Have you ever seen the government in church? Have you? Does the government go to church? No. Does the government pray? No. What is the government? It's the Constitution for the United States of America, the Bill of Rights, and the amendments lawfully made thereto. You see, you're mistaking people for the government. The founders of this country, by and large, were Christian. Many of them weren't Christian, but pretended to be, were deists, and you can find that in their writings. Many of them were members of the secret societies. How many of you believe Thomas Jefferson was a Christian? I'm not afraid. I believed it until I read the truth about Thomas Jefferson and studied his life. Thomas Jefferson hated Christianity. Thomas Jefferson tore up the Bible. Thomas Jefferson wrote his own Bible because he said the God of the universe could not possibly be that terrible God represented in the King James Version of the Bible. Don't be afraid to raise your hand in here, folks. Nothing that I'm going to say is intended 
as a personal slant or insult or attack upon anybody in here. But I need your cooperation in order for us all to learn. See, I wasn't afraid. I raised my hand. That's what I believed most of my life until I really studied Thomas Jefferson and found out what he really was. He was a deist. So was Benjamin Franklin. How many of you knew that Benjamin Franklin was the master of the Masonic Lodge in Philadelphia? How many of you knew that he was the master of the Lodge of Nine Muses in France? Have you ever studied the Lodge of Nine Muses? Boy, you better. How many of you knew that when Benjamin Franklin was in the colonies, he pretended to be a pious Christian, although he was not seen in church too much, pretended to be a pious Christian. However, he entered into a sexual relationship and a living arrangement with two different women and sired children by both of them, never married either one. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that when Benjamin Franklin went to France, he surrounded himself with prostitutes and drank champagne almost 24 hours a day and just reveled in orgies? How many of you knew that? You'd be surprised what some ugly old men are capable of. <laughs> See, these are things you don't know because you were taught something different and it makes you uncomfortable to hear what I'm telling you only for the reason that you've been taught something else and you've been reared with it and you've had accepted it. It's hard to let go of something that you have learned and accepted that is not true. You don't want to let go of it, because then you have to give up your comfort zone. How many of you know that George Washington was a Freemason? How many of you know if you're a Freemason, you cannot possibly in your wildest dreams be a Christian? It's absolutely impossible. And I can show it to you in their own words. So how could George Washington be a Christian? And you don't even know the slightest, teeniest bit about his real involvement in the secret societies. He founded a military order, a secret order of his military officers, the generals and senior officers of the revolution. What's the name of that order? The Knights. of Cincinnati. Also known as the Knights of the Golden Circle. What sprang out of the Knights of the Golden Circle many years later? The Ku Klux Klan. How many of you knew that? No, see, you don't know these things because you're so willing to accept that what you know is right without investigating. And until you break out of that mold, I'm going to tell you right now, you're never going to know anything about the truth of this country, who founded it, and why, and where it's going, what's happening today, and what the consequences are going to be for us down the line. You see, all of this has happened over and over and over and over and over again throughout the history of the human race. These people know how to lead us wherever they want us to go because they study history and we don't. What was Rome? What was Rome? A republic? What kind of republic? A constitutional republic. They had a constitution. Did you know that? It was a republic. Did you know that? <laughs> What happened to Rome? It fell into oligarchy, and then into dictatorship, then into rampant immorality, and socialism declined, fell, and became the Vatican. Anybody here doubt that? I can prove every word of it. The Roman Empire never fell. It changed its name. The emperor became the pope. This is the truth. 
The old pantheon of Roman gods became the pantheon of saints, and they are identical in name and everything else. Now, I'm not trying to hurt Catholics. I'm not saying that you belong to the wrong religion. I'm not telling you to change your religion. I believe in freedom. I'll fight for you to be a Catholic or a Buddhist or a Baptist or whatever you want to be. But when you come to talk to me, I'm going to tell you the truth about all of it, whether you want to hear it or not. And the only way to escape that is to get away from me. Okay? We are all manipulated. All of us. Do you have the freedom to choose your religion? Do you? Well, it depends upon a few things. So, however you answered that, whether you answered it loudly or quietly, you were right. Doesn't matter. If you were reared in a family that did not indoctrinate you into any religion, then by the time you reached the age where you could be responsible to make your own decision, yes, you could choose your own religion based upon honest study. If you're a child and your mother is Jewish, what are you? You're Jewish. And how are you reared? Jewish. So from the time you're a little baby, you are taught to be Jewish. Do you have a choice? No. Is Jewish a race? No. So is it true that if you're born of a Jewish mother, you're a Jew whether you want to be or not? No. You're a Jew because you're taught to be a Jew from the time you're born. Same with Catholics. If your parents are Catholic from the time you're a little child, you're required to go to catechism. What is catechism? Brainwashing. What is teaching this little Jewish child that he's a Jew whether he wants to be or not and teaching him how to be a Jew all the time he's a little baby up until the time he grows up? It's brainwashing. What is it when your parents take you to the Baptist church from the time you're a little bitty baby and require you to go to Bible school and teach you all of these things from the time that you're that small and can't make a conscious choice of your own and don't know what is right is wrong? What is that? Brainwashing. Is it right? Depends on your viewpoint. Personally, I think it's wrong. I think everybody should be able to make a choice based upon honest investigation and finding out what is right to them. Now, a really devout Christian would tell me, I'm full of crap. A really devout Jew would tell me the same thing. So would a devout Catholic, and so would a devout Buddhist. Because they don't want to hear it. Why do they do these things? To make sure that the religion survives and prospers and grows. Somebody else would say, oh no, it's to make sure that the child is raised in the proper religion. What is the proper religion? I could ask everybody in this room and get just as many different answers as there are people in this room. Isn't that true? Now, let me ask you something else. If this government were Christian, which Christian is it? Seventh-day Adventist? Certainly not Branch Davidian. <laughs> Baptist? Come on. A relationship with what? A relationship with Jesus Christ? Can you have a country that is Christian and have freedom? No. What if in a hundred years the majority of the population changes their religion to Buddhist? Now, what kind of country is it? You can't assign a religion to a country. A country doesn't exist except on paper and in your mind. The religion belongs to the people. Does everybody understand that? Let me show you something here. How many of you have seen this? What is that? 
Where have you seen it? Pardon? Where have you seen that? Jehovah's Witnesses, that's true. Where else? How many of you watch Pat Robertson? You don't recognize that? He had that for a long time. It's the symbol of what great Christian broadcasting network? Who's on TV in? Huh? What does it mean? This is the marriage of church and state. Is that what you want? What happened the last time you had the marriage of church and state? Anybody who disagreed got what? Burned at the cross, placed on the rack, chopped into pieces, tortured, murdered, burned. Now don't get me wrong, I believe in freedom. If that's what you want, you're entitled to want that all you want. But I gotta tell you, you try to bring this into being and I'll fight you with everything I've got. Because I don't believe in burning people at the stake. I don't believe in placing them on the rack. And I am a Christian. I don't believe in persecuting Jews because they're Jews, because they killed Jesus Christ, because I guarantee you there's not a Jew living on the face of this earth today that even knew Jesus Christ, much less killed him. That's what's called what? Corruption of blood. Our Constitution forbids corruption of blood, doesn't it? Because it's wrong. <coughs> By the same token, I don't like Jews who say, we're the chosen race and the rest of you are a bunch of stupid cattle. And we're going to rule the world someday. You know what I say to them? <laughs> Not if I can help it. Because why? Because it's this! Only it has a star of David instead of a cross in the crown. Is that what you want? You see, that's democracy. When you have enough people who believe like you do to force your will upon everyone else, you become the bad guy. What does freedom say? What is freedom? The right to choose. As long as I don't hurt the person or property of any other human being, I can believe what I want, go to whatever church I want, be whatever I want, read whatever book I want, do whatever I wish, and do it abundantly and with prosperity. And without freedom, I couldn't do any of it, and neither can you. When you ask for this, you're asking for enslavement. And right now, you might be the slave master, but who's going to be in charge 50 years from now? That's the uncertainty about these things. You might be on top now, but just wait a little while. It never fails. If you study the history of the world, you'll find whoever the oppressed is today will be the master tomorrow. A lot of what's happening in the world today is because this happened yesterday. Make no mistake about it, everything that is happening in the world today is because of race and religion and the persecution caused by those two different things throughout the history of the world. Is everybody up with me? I know that some of you don't agree with me, that's okay. I'm not telling you you have to. But I want you to go out of here thinking about these things and think about what is it that you really want. You want to be free so that you can be what you want to be and worship where you want to worship? Or do you want to cause a situation whereby you're in charge so that you can force your will upon everybody else so that they'll get pissed off enough to overthrow you and do the same thing to you? Because that's exactly what that brings about. Exactly, it's never failed. Study history, you'll see. It's the truth. So, gee, if our founding fathers 
were deists and they were members of the secret societies and some of them were masquerading as Christians and some of them were just flat weren't Christians weren't masquerading at all why did they create this country they came here to create a new world not a country how many of you really read what they wrote they didn't come here to create a country they came here to create a new world what did they call it they called it the new world didn't they what else did they call it the grand experiment the great experiment remember reading those words and just read right over them didn't really understand what it meant they came from a world that was oppressive ruled by kings and queens and popes and prelates and bishops and lords and barons who just because they didn't like the way you look could chop you into quarters and throw you to the pigs if they wanted to anytime they wanted to and if you didn't believe the religion they wanted you to believe in they burn you at the stake or torture you in some way make your life absolutely miserable they came here to create a new world free from all of that but they knew that they could not be safe in the new world if the old world was the way that it was how do you get rid of kings and queens and barons and lords and emperors and prelates and sultans and emirs how do you do that? That's exactly right. A new world order. From the beginning, that was the goal, ladies and gentlemen. That's the absolute truth. From the very beginning, that was the goal. What do you think new world means? What do you think it means? So they did something that was unheard of, never been done in the history of the world. They set the cattle free. They said, ah, you're not really a serf. You're not really a slave. You're not really as dumb as they say you are. You're not really a bunch of cattle. Now you're free men. You got brains. We're even going to write this contract to guarantee your freedom. But, we know you won't keep it, because you're human. And they wrote about that, didn't they? Didn't they tell us all the ways that we would give it up? Didn't they write about it? Didn't they warn us over and over and over and over again? In all of their writings? They knew we would give it up, because we're human. And they were geniuses who understood human nature probably better than any single group of men that's ever lived throughout the history of the world. They understood it perfectly. What did Ben Franklin say when he came out of the Constitutional Convention after everything was signed, sealed, and delivered? Somebody said, hey, Ben, what have ye wrought? See? A republic, if you can keep it. He knew. They all knew. What was it really about? Why did they give it to us if they knew we would give it up? And they did know. Make no mistake about that. They knew. What do you think the fight over federalism was all about? They wanted to make sure that at some future point, the great central government would seize control. And they even pretended to fight over this. Like all of these secret society people do. It's called the Hegelian dialectic. We want all these people to do something. So you and I are going to get together. We're going to create two different causes. We're going to get all these people wrapped up in it. We're going to pretend to fight against each other. And this fight is going to bring about the conclusion that we really wanted in the first place. And they're all going to think that it was done accidentally by them. And we didn't have anything to do with it. 
How many of you understand the concept of Hegelian dialectic of manipulation of political resolution? If you don't, you'd better read Hegel and you'd better study it because that's what's happening. That's what the abortion issue is all about. Can government decide the abortion issue? Can you decide it with laws? If you could, everybody would obey the law, there wouldn't be any issue, would there? The Supreme Court has already made the law, haven't they? It's the truth. The whole issue is designed to create a conflict which cannot be solved except by some world body. What do you think the ozone holes are about? How many of you understand the ozone holes? How many of you don't? Okay, it's about time somebody explained it to you. Because this is one of the biggest cons going. And what's it designed to do? Create a conflict between people who need to pollute the atmosphere and people who don't want it polluted to present the, prevent the depletion of the ozone layer so that we're all not fried by the sun's rays coming from the great Apollo up there riding across the sky in his chariot. And by the way, if you want confirmation of what I said about the Founding Fathers, if you really believe that they were Christian, go look at the city that they laid out from the air. Look at the symbolism that they built into it. All deist, all Masonic, all Jacobin. It's another word for Jacobin, Illuminist, Illuminati. Go into the Capitol building, stand right in the center of the rotunda, and look straight up at the dome where nobody ever looks. And what do you see? You see the apotheosis of George Washington. Riding across the heavens in the chariot of Apollo. Who is Apollo? George Washington. He's become God now. And around the perimeter of the Capitol dome, you see all the old gods of the Roman pantheon. They're all there. Zeus, Mercury, Prometheus, all of them. What's that doing on the inside of our capital dome if this country is a Christian nation? Can you tell me that? No. And you never will be able to in a million years unless you turn around and admit the truth. The truth is, is it never was, never was intended to be. The people in government for many years have been Christian. Are they now? Most of the people in our government now are not Christian, and that's part of the problem today. They have no morals, no ethical standards of behavior, and therefore anything goes. They are a pack of pathetic, chronic liars, which is the sign of a socialist every single time. Socialism believes in what? The supremacy of the mind of man, not in God. Anytime man has supremacy over everything, everything becomes what? Subjective. Subject if you're God, how can you do something wrong? And that's the whole problem with this crowd now. They don't have anybody to answer to. You see, whether you believe in God or not, the human race must have God. They must have a superior power to which they must answer. If they do not, then everything becomes subjective. And if I want to slice your head in half, by God, there's nothing wrong with me doing it because I'm God. You understand that? That's really what's wrong. When man has nothing or no one to answer to, man can do no wrong, can he? Okay, here's the problem with the ozone hole thing. How many of you have noticed that every time they show a picture of an ozone hole, it's always over or near one of the poles? How many of you have noticed that? Every time. Because it has to be. It's the only place it occurs, and it's not really a hole at all. And it has nothing to do with what we do. It has nothing to do with CFCs or anything else. 
that we do here on this earth, period. Because here's the truth of it. How many of you have also noticed that whenever that hole occurs, it occurs at that particular pole in the wintertime? Why is that? Well, the earth is tilted on its axis. So if this is the North Pole up here, we have the earth right here, and we have old Saul over here giving out his rays. What has to happen to form ozone, folks? Sunlight must interact with gases in the atmosphere. Which gas? Oxygen. When sunlight strikes oxygen in the atmosphere, it causes a chemical reaction which splits O2 into two single O's. So O2 becomes, what is that? Ozone. ozone. Each one of these is ozone. But what is it also? It's what's called a free radical. It doesn't like to be in that position. It doesn't like to be unattached. Okay? Some like people I know. Can't be without a mate for 10 seconds. And so they always choose the wrong one, which ensures that they're going to break up and they can't be without a mate for 10 seconds. <clears throat> Believe it or not, most of us go through that little period. We think we have to be with somebody all the time. Not true. Okay. These, because they're free radicals, they don't like that state of being, don't last very long. As soon as they find...
time ago. There's not a nickel's worth of difference between the Democratic and Republican Party, and hasn't been for an awful long time. And it doesn't matter which one is in the White House, we still go toward the New World Order, don't we? We still go more and more into socialism, don't we? But if they were truly different, that wouldn't happen, would it? So, I guess that, uh, <laughs> what time is it? Anybody get the time? 2.30. Let's take a very short break. Let's hold it to 10 minutes because I've got an awful lot to cover, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, we are also going to do another Groom Lake trip. How many of you are interested in Area 51, Groom Dry Lake? That's going to be almost the entire subject of tomorrow's lecture. We're going to do an awful lot about that tomorrow. It's one of the major manipulations that's going on. It's something everybody is curious about. It involves uh, tremendous technology and uh, a lot of mystery. And uh, it's extremely interesting. So, pardon? Uh, that's going to be in uh, August. Uh, let me see, June, July, August. It, I think it's the end of August, f around the 1st of September. Is that Labor Day? Labor Day. It's going to be over the Labor Day weekend. We'll be going there. Is anybody here who went the last time with us? Gary. Stand up and tell them about our Groom Lake trip, Gary. And they were testing behind us because they knew we were there. <laughs> Did you have a good time? I had a great time just keeping up with you and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> How about the people that came? All really nice people. Fantastic people. Only the best people ever come to our activities. And I'm not exaggerating at all. They are the greatest, most gracious, most polite, most concerned people that I've ever met in my life. And that's why they come. That's why you people are here. You care. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. And that's the truth. So many of you fit into that category that I was just talking about. Some of you just grouch the old codgers and you know it. <laughs> like, like I get sometimes. <clears throat> now, if I get a little impatient sometimes on the radio or anywhere else, it's because I've been doing this for so many years, folks. I don't want to be rude to anybody. I really don't. But I've learned a few things. One is there's no time left to suffer fools. There just isn't any. So if I'm confronted with a fool, I just let them know it, get it off my chest, get rid of them as quickly as I can, and hope that that is enough of a shock that maybe they'll get out of their foolishness. Okay? Because there just isn't any time. We're going down the tubes on a roller coaster. There is no time to tell you all that you are brilliant, wonderful American people and that, uh, you know, with people like you, we don't have any problem. We're going to turn it around right away and, you know, pass the hat and put some money in there and hoorah. Bullshit. <laughs> it ain't true. And I ain't going to tell it to you. You're never going to hear that from me. We're in this situation because all of us, me included, we're dummies for most of our lives. And unless we change that, we are never going to turn anything around. And that 
is the cold hard truth whether we like it or not and we all at some point in our life have to go in the bathroom confront our own self in the mirror and say Bill Cooper you've been a fool for most of your life what is the matter with you you've got to stop it right now you have gotta stop being stupid you gotta become a real American you gotta care about things you gotta find out what the truth is so you know what to care about and it's hard to say I know because I've done it I couldn't be up here if I had not confronted myself in that manner. You've got to do that. You have to do it. If you can't, you can't make a change. You'll never understand. You'll always be saying, well, I ain't no sheeple. I ain't no fool. I know everything. I know what America is. <laughs> Okay, just hope that I'm not around when you say those things. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> There's lots of things um, that you can do, that you need to do. But uh, I want to uh, just sort of give you a few things that are recent. So you'll, you'll know, and these are not really terribly serious things. Some of them are, but they're just things that you will all understand, and you'll understand them quickly. Listen to this. How many of you know who Alvin Toffler is? How many of you have read his books? What was the first book? Future Shock. Then after that was what? No, the third wave came after the second wave. <laughs> yeah, he, he wrote a whole plethora of books. Now there's some people you can listen to who are not gurus. God's not whispering in their ear. They don't have a crystal ball. But they are what I call the inner circle. They know what's coming. They're part of it. And when they write or they talk, you'd better listen to them. One of them is Henry Kissinger. Listen to Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger doesn't just get up and jaw. If he says something that's important, listen to him. Whether you like him or not doesn't make any difference. But I've discovered that most people who ever meet him really like him a lot. He's very charismatic, very polite, very gracious, very nice guy. He's also one of the biggest traitors that's ever lived. But isn't he in good company? Really? Another one is Alvin Toffler. And there's lots more, and I'm not going to go through the whole list. But Alvin Toffler, whatever he writes, is generally going to happen. Another one that you have to read is Foreign Relations. Foreign Relations is published by the Council on Foreign Relations, and you can subscribe to their publication. Whatever they write in there usually happens about two years later. Whatever it is. It's almost like magic. If they're not involved in any of this, how come what they write about always happens? Almost everybody in government belongs to the Council of Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission, or both. Toffler admits to having been a Marxist in the third wave. He wrote it on page 24. Now, when a socialist admits that they were a Marxist, what does that mean? They still are. Toffler says in the third wave, it requires governments that are simpler, more effective, yet more democratic than any we know today. What's that a code word for? Socialist. It is a civilization with its own distinctive world outlook, its way of dealing with time, space, logic, and causality. What's that mean? World outlook, world government, world control, causality, social engineering. You understand what I'm saying? 
They speak in a code that they understand perfectly. The average person hasn't got the slightest idea what they're talking about. And if you don't study them and their symbology and what they believe in and what their agenda is, you'll never know. You could read this and never know what this guy is saying. Oh, that sounds nice. That's what most people say. Oh, that sounds nice. Doesn't it sound nice in a way? But if you really understand, it's not nice at all. What they're saying is, screw you, we're going to enslave you. We're going to engineer how you live, how you think, how you work, everything. Hitler tried it, didn't he? You see, this is a big de deception that Hitler was a right wing guy. Hitler, and you better learn this if you never learn anything else in your world. Hitler was a socialist. Nazi means National Socialist German Workers Party, doesn't it? Hitler socialized Germany. All control is always on the left. Always. If you're left wing, you're for control of yourself and other people. A scale measures two extremes. On the far left, you have total control of everything and everyone, and, by the way, ownership of everything and everyone, by the state, which is more important than anything. It's called communism. On the right, all the way at the extreme, you have the total absence and lack of any and all control by anybody over anything or anyone. That's called anarchy. Anarchy sucks. Communism sucks. Socialism is just a little step above communism and usually degrades into communism, and it also sucks. Usually, anything close to anarchy also sucks. And so do all those people who want to engage in those things. To tell you the truth, they're in a mind state that sucks. A constitutional republic is somewhere in the middle of these two extremes and provides safeguards to protect individual freedoms and creator-endowed liberty. Whether you believe in God or not, if you don't understand that freedom and liberty must be creator-endowed, then you are opening the door for somebody to take it away from you because they don't have to answer to a creator. You understand? So even if you don't believe in God, you better start. If you want to stay free, if you want to stay free, if you don't care about freedom, you don't have to believe in God. You see, there must be something that human beings answer to to protect us from ourselves. Because the minute we become God, how many of you in here want me to be God? I don't want me to be God either. Because I know who I am. I know the temptations that I'm subject to. I have seen what power can do to people and I might fall prey to that same corruption that would allow me to use that power wrongly. Even Jesus Christ, if you're a Christian, was tempted. What was it that Satan offered him? The world. What is it these people are after? The world. Jesus turned it down. They're not gonna. If you were to give me the world, you know, I'd be hard put to turn it down. Because then I could make it the way I want it to be. Is it the way I want it to be the way you want it to be? You don't know that. You don't know, and that's the big problem. Why would you even want to take a chance? I'm a pretty good guy. But you don't want to take a chance on giving me the world or anybody else. You don't want the world. You don't want vast amounts of power. Because you're a human being. And power will corrupt you and destroy you and you will use it to destroy others. And that's the truth of the matter. You don't want it.
Toffler said in the third wave on page six, this book is based on what I call the revolutionary premise. <laughs> That's Marxist if there ever was a Marxist statement in the whole wide world. <laughs> 